the turn of the century, the world had become a very different place. Industry was taking the place of the traditional way of life, sparking a new wave of thinking. After the First World War, the world was getting smaller thanks to a wave of new inventions being introduced. Suddenly, you could talk to someone over a long distance, listen to what was happening through a small speaking box, and one of the fanciest ways of entertainment was going to the movie house. That was what was going on in Western civilization. On the other side of the world, especially in the Far East, it was still a place of honor and tradition. And while the rest of the world moved forward, countries like Japan and China chose to stay within their own ways of life. After the Great Depression, the world would be gripped in a war once again, and Japan would be one of those nations that chose to reach out to the Axis and conquer. The events that would follow would not be the most cherished. In 1945, as the war was coming to a close, the United States would drop the atomic bomb on two major Japanese cities, sending the people into a time of hardship and despair. Many lives were lost, and the land, once pure and frozen in time, would be reduced to ashes. Up until 1952, Japan would be occupied by the Allied powers, and in that time, Japan would go through a major transformation from imperial to democratic. Japan had made it clear that it was time to shape up and start moving forward along with the rest of the world. Through that, they delved into many of the industries that were dominating the world markets, but there would be a certain few that would take a deeper look into popular culture, and from that, start a brand new revolution. Before World War II, America was already known for its emerging library of film. It had grown so it had its own award ceremony for voting on the best in the industry that year. There would be one man that would introduce the world to a young sailor named Steamboat Willie. Of course you all know him as that iconic Mickey Mouse. While Steamboat Willie is not the first animated short, it was a landmark achievement being the first cartoon to be synchronized with sound. The success of Steamboat Willie would not only lead to an international fame for Walt Disney, but for Mickey as well as the first animated short to attract favorable attention. Mickey Mouse would launch Walt Disney to stardom, and Mickey would appear in future animated shorts throughout the post-war era. Of course, in 1938, animation would take another leap forward thanks to Walt Disney, as Snow White and the Seven Dwarves would become the very first full-length animated feature produced in color. Animation would bring great joy to the Western world and revolutionize the industry of film, and much like all in the business, the famous mouse would soon meet animation's new bad boy. In 1940, a sly gray rabbit from Brooklyn would grace theaters with his own animated shorts. The Warner Brothers Company would introduce the world to a group of nutty slapstick-influenced cartoons called the Looney Tunes. While some of the famous Looney Tunes characters you know today had already been created, it was the unstoppable team of Tex Avery, Fritz Freeling, Max Fleischer, Bob Clampett, and Chuck Jones that gave audiences around the world a chance to laugh until their buttons busted. Throughout the 1930s, all the way to the golden age of television in the 1950s, animation had become quite the spectacle, as some of the most iconic of characters would invade the movie screens before the lights went down on the main attraction for the evening. While it was mostly adults that would end up seeing these shorts, it was clear that there was a whole other group that should be watching these imaginative creations. When the television had finally reached the family rooms across the United States, it would be the mornings that children would be sitting down to watch. Japan, much like many of the oldest cultures, had always had a gift for storytelling. From the tales of mythical creatures and fierce warriors, they were stories that would intrigue and entertain the young and old. In the late 1940s, Japan had seen a major change in their culture. What once was a land of farming and nature was transformed into a world of industry. Under the influence of the democracy, Japan began moving forward with the rest of the world under the occupation of the United States, and the revolution of film would soon reach the land of the rising sun. It would be then that a few great men would take film and turn it into something grand for their own people. The most legendary of all would be the director Akira Kurosawa. He first came on the film scene in 1943 with his first full-length film, Sugata Sanshiro. But it would be in 1954 where he would create his opus, 
Seven Samurai. Seven Samurai was the story of a village constantly ransacked by bandits. The villagers who had finally had enough would seek out seven brave samurai that would be willing to take the task of helping them fight back. It was a grand story of heroism, but it was also a film that introduced the theme of the anti-hero, and that not all stories can have a happy ending. Seven Samurai is described as one of the greatest and most influential films ever made, and it is one of the select few Japanese films to become widely known in the West for an extended period of time. Later on, this film would be embraced so much by the world that many future films across the globe would be based around its theme. While Japan continued to rebuild, there was another thing that was introduced. During the post-war occupation, a band was lifted, which would finally allow the Japanese people to view the world of animation. All those famous faces that have been entertaining Americans since the time of the Great Depression were finally bringing smiles to their faces. Still, to some, it was more than just faces, it was also putting a new idea into motion. When Japan was given the opportunity to witness Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, animation was on the minds of the Japanese film industry. While already known for storytelling, that was complex and filled with depth driven by characters, a new breed of animation would be created in Japan. It would soon be dubbed by popular culture as anime. Anime first arose at the start of the 20th century when Japanese filmmakers experimented with techniques pioneered in Europe and the United States. The first works in Japan were have said to have begun in the early 1920s, much like America. Unfortunately, most of the early works were lost due to the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923. In the 1940s, most anime, much like the rest of the world during wartime, was used for propaganda, and in 1945, the very first anime full-length film, Mamotaro's Divine Sea Warriors, was released. Still, it was in the 1960s when manga artists started to try and put their printed works into cell animation and create their own line of animated programs and companies. One of the most influential artists was Osamu Tezuka. Tezuka was impressed by the Walt Disney Company and based a lot of his work on that animation style. However, to cut costs, he would create simpler techniques to limit the number of frames in production. What he was most known for was his specific staple in anime. Tezuka was known for his characters having enormous eyes. The eyes were influenced by the first few Disney animated films, as well as popular cartoon characters such as Betty Boop. In 1959, Tezuka would finally give his people something no one would have expected, its very first popular animated series. In 1959, Japan would finally be uplifted by something amazing, a little boy built by a brilliant scientist who would soar across television screens. His name was the Mighty Atom. It was the story of a utopian future where man and robots coexisted. A brilliant scientist named Dr. Tenma would create a little robot boy in the wake of the death of his own son. He created a robot version of his son, who would eventually be rejected by his creator because he was truly never going to be able to replace the son that he lost. But the robot boy would discover that he was more than just a robot. He would become a hero. If this story sounds familiar to you, it should come at no surprise. In 1963, the Mighty Adam would soon be discovered by Americans, and he would be known as Astro Boy. Frederick L. Shad, an American who got his education in Japan, would discover this work of Tezuka, and go on to translate his printed work into English. Astro Boy would go to great heights never before experienced in the world of anime. The wonder of this series, which was also helped by the medium of superheroes, allowed Astro Boy to have a tremendous American fanbase. The 1960s would see the world go through more change than ever before. The Cold War would once again grip the world in fear, but it would also create a huge explosion of popular culture. Music, film, and television would go through many changes, and by this time, animation would be mostly geared towards children. Saturday morning cartoons included the legendary Disney and Warner Brothers, but there would also be other animated programs, including Hanna-Barbera and Harvey Toons. While Astro Boy was vastly popular, the series would end in 1965, but its broadcasting station, NBC, would show syndicated episodes all the way to the early 1970s.
Between this time period, America would open the doors to another Tezuka creation. Originally titled Jungle Emperor, the story of a lion cub destined to become the king of the African jungle would be the second anime series to air in America. In 1966, Kimba the White Lion premiered. It was also the very first anime series to be broadcasted in color in Japan when it first started to air in 1965. The story began with a great white lion named Caesar, as he tries to prevent the animals from being killed by hunters. The hunters would soon capture his pregnant wife, who would give birth to their son Kimba on the boat. Kimba would be told by his mother that he must return to the jungle and fulfill his destiny. When he finally reaches the land of his past, he plans to create a peace between the animals and the human race. What was distinct about this series was in fact that in each season, Kimba would grow. Very few animated shows allowed their characters to do that. This made the story more believable and vastly popular. It would also be the first anime series to develop its own feature film. Like Frederick Schott, Fred Ladd was another American name who caught on to the anime revolution. And he was one other of the major names that would bring anime to the United States. He definitely believed that bigger was better and he introduced America to a true anime staple, the mecha or the giant robot. In 1964, Gigantor would premiere in the United States. A series that was set in the year 2000, the show follows the adventure of little Jimmy Sparks, a 12-year-old boy who controls Gigantor, a huge flying robot with a remote control. Gigantor was supposed to be one of the most powerful entities in the world, but unfortunately with all this power, he had no intelligence. Whoever had control of the remote control controlled Gigantor. Originally developed as a weapon by Jimmy's father, Gigantor was later reprogrammed to act as a guardian of peace. Together, Jimmy and Gigantor would battle crime around the world and clash with many villains who were trying to steal or undermine the giant robot. Thanks to the work of Osamu Tezuka, Japan's animation world would soon see new faces emerging destined to repeat success. Two of the most well-known was Toei Studios and Tatsunoko Productions. These two studios would be constant rivals towards each other, but as far as bringing their work to America, Tatsunoko would be one that would reach the goal first, thanks to a certain boy and his fancy car. In 1967, one of the most popular anime characters would make his appearance on the small screen, with fast-paced stories, an extremely catchy theme song, and of course, an awesome car. The world would be introduced to none other than Speed Racer. From 1967 to 1968, it ran as a television series in the United States with 52 episodes. His adventures centered around his powerful Mach 5 car, his girlfriend Trixie, his little brother Spritle with his pet chimp Chim Chim, and his mysterious older brother Racer X. What allowed Speed Racer to stand out was the plot, because it was more complicated than the conventional American cartoons of the 1960s. The stories revolved around corporate greed and corruption, as Speed would be the innocent hero who would want nothing to do with any of these people of power and just do what he loved, which was racing. Still, the overall purpose was to please the growing fan base worldwide with exciting stories that involved facing adversity on the racetrack and beyond. One of the major controversial matters to this day with Speed Racer, and as well as the popular anime shows, was the editing that these shows had to go through before being shown to American viewers. Some of the complex plot points, as well as certain visuals, had to be removed from these episodes, as they were deemed inappropriate for young viewers. Nevertheless, Speed Racer was considered appropriate entertainment for the whole family. It was clear that America had now accepted anime as part of their culture to a degree. The big eyes had definitely achieved the impossible dream. At this point, even with many other anime shows reaching the United States, these big names would be preserved in legend. These shows would get all the syndication, reinvention, and more, and it was clear that anime was here to stay. The question was, how far it would go. By the end of the 1960s, the world had changed faster than ever before. Japan had officially seen a new sunrise as the nation was accepted back in the positive eye of the Western world. Instead of isolationists, Japan had become an economic giant with a sign of good times. Tokyo was a proud host of Japan's first Olympic Games in 1964. The world of animation had played a helping hand into bringing Japan to this point. Now with a new decade approaching, anime was about to bring the world of animation to places it never would have imagined. Nobody that came. 